at 39 years old right now, going on 40, is the best player in the world. It, it, going to, if you're watching Olympic basketball, he is clearly the leader of Team USA Olympic men's basketball, and he is clearly still one of the best players in the entire world at 39 years old. And I've broke this down before, but I'm going to do it again because it just – it just doesn't make sense that he didn't do more 10 years ago when he was in his absolute prime, and it pisses me off, and I can't let it go. Frustrating. Frustrating. He should have done more. He really should have. And I know this is a personal bitch and beef of mine, but it's almost like, you know, Spider-Man, great power, great responsibility. He just never had it, man. He just never had that same level of anger or frustration that the Jordans and Kobe's and Birds and Magic's of like, I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to use all my talent. Like, he never maximized his talent, and it's just, ugh. He really should have been the undisputed GOAT. He should have had a run where LeBron James should have been the best we've ever seen, period, end of story, hands down. And I'm sorry, other than LeBron's fan base, if you ask anybody else who's not a fan of LeBron James as their number one, and they have anybody not named LeBron as their number one player, almost 99% of them, you ask who's the GOAT, they're going to say like MJ or somebody else. They're not going to say LeBron. Most people outside of the, the fan base that just sucks at his teat uh, really you know, understands that he probably should have been He's the most talented, but he just never, he just never, uh, it just never really happened for him. But I mean, you know, he is leading Team USA. L let's go to the video here. You know, uh, LeBron is leading Team USA here for me, Corey. If you can go ahead and pop to that, uh, if you can go here, you know, this is actually just the last Brazilian game got busted up in the eye, but hit it for me. I mean, and Team USA is going to win gold, and LeBron is leading the way at 39 years old. They're 9 0 this year. They're looking for their fifth straight goal. They just spanked Brazil, 122 to 87. Um, the only other real threat, Canada is out. Canada actually was ousted by Wimby and the French. And so Serbia is up next for America. But we've won all four of our Olympic games so far by 15 plus points. And they're all taking LeBron's lead, who's been an absolute animal. Just the last game, before he got his eye busted, had nine assists in 12 minutes. The team itself had 18 assists in their first 19 baskets made. They're taking after him, and you can see it on the court. They're following his lead. I mean, even statistically, 10 players are averaging seven points, but no players are averaging more than 10. So, I mean, it is truly a team effort following this kind of, you know, all for one, one for all, let's all be completely unselfish style. And that's coming from the head of the snake. Most teams will follow the head of the snake. That is clear clearly a LeBron James-ish style offense and what he would desire. Because LeBron just, you know, for whatever reason, never wanted to be the alpha and stand out and be the one with all the pressure on him the way the other goats behind him did. And so you're seeing USA take that. That actually probably works in an Olympics. And again, they're going to win the gold medal, shocking, uh, you know, despite a uh, shocking upset with Canada being gone. We should be able to take France or Serbia, anybody else who comes out of there. But... You know, again, seeing him do it, and I'm like, you know, it's great. And as you saw from the highlights, it's phenomenal. He's 39. He's in his 21st season with young bucks going against the most competitive, you know, people in the world right now who are playing for their country, and he's still the best player. And so part of me wants to go like, wow, that's great, and that's a cool story. And the other part of me goes, dude, where the F was this, you know, this level of attitude and anger or at least this kind of – do, do, do you get where I'm going? And and I got a I got a graph to point this out, and so I, I'm I'm keeping you busy there, my man. But um, I mean, like I've always said, LeBron's legacy will be his longevity, and I've always said that from day one. LeBron's legacy will always be that he was very good for an extended amount of time, and he had sustained greatness. You know, for 21 years, if you add career stats. LeBron is arguably a GOAT. He has the most career points of anybody ever in the NBA. He has the fourth most career assist of anybody in the NBA. He has four MVPs, one of the tops all time in MVPs, four titles, which is again up there, and 20 All Star appearances. Yet, he never led the league in scoring except for one time. He never led the league in assist. He was only third overall in MVPs of all time accumulated. He's never won a Defensive Player of the Year. He's he's won four titles, but he's lost six. You know, it's 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 like boxing. When when I remember like Klitschko, you know, he had like four thousand three hundred days as heavyweight champion, or, or Lennox Lewis when I think he's fourth all time at three thousand. Like. Who gave? No one wanted to watch them because you would watch them and go, yeah, they're really good, but they're clearly not Ali. They're not Tyson. 
You know what I mean? They're, they're not just because somebody else maybe didn't have it for as long of a reign. I would still take their shorter reign and watch their greatness in that condensed version more than the extended. And, and that's what I see with LeBron. I saw a dude who was always at least 80 to 90 percent of what he was for a sustained, uh, extended amount of time. So therefore, he's got great career stats, but he never maxed it out. And it just bothers me. And I mean, the, I'm sorry, the undisputed GOAT really should have had one of these. He should have had the season, for at least from 2006 to like 2010 or 2009, I believe, when he was with the Cavaliers and he was young and he really had no help. This is why I got this graph up, and it's kind of complicated, and I'm going to you know get into it and break down all the numbers here. But this is kind of what I'm trying to point out. So at the height of his powers before he was a heedle, before he had other help, LeBron James's three best seasons, you can see in the middle, are in white. He had 31 points per game, 7-7, 30 points per game, 8-7, 30 points per game, 7-9. and nine. Th Those are all, look, Great years. Those are unbelievable for a lot of people. But for the most talented player at 6'8", 250, not missing a physical gift in the world, intelligence, IQ, work ethic, had it all put together, the only thing that he missed was just, I don't know, man, this, this kind of need the other greats did to prove a point. These other guys should not have had seasons that compare to him. I mean, again, look at Jokic, the big, fat, slow, clearly, I don't practice, I don't give shit. He had 27, 14, and 8 one year in 2022. Larry Bird, who most people will laugh at you and say, oh, Larry Bird was never even close to LeBron. Really? Well, in 1985, he had 26, 10, and 7. Russell Westbrook, who was right now serving and trying to get a, as you believe he just got his minimum contract as he got traded to Denver on like his fifth team. Once upon a time, average a triple-double, 31.6, 11 rebounds, 10 assists. That was only like, you know, six, seven years ago. Giannis Antetokounmpo is a great player. But I don't think anybody puts him above LeBron in the all-time rankings yet. He had a season where he had 30, 14, and 6 not that long ago. And Michael Jordan, I look, I don't even know what to say. Y'all y'all love to try to compare him to MJ. I mean, besides the fact that he has the 6-0 and o titles to his 4-6 and six in the finals, it which... Let's go by, like, what the overall dominance Michael Jordan from game to game to game was able to do. Look at this shit. One year he had 35, 6, and 6 in 1988, and the year before that, 1987, Michael Jordan averaged 37 points per game, 6 rebounds, 6 assists, 3 steals. In that year, he was the most valuable player. He was the defensive player of the year. He was number one in the leagues in scoring. He was number one in the league in steals. He won the All-Star MVP to go with his regular season MVP, and he won the slam dunk contest because, I don't know, he just freaking felt like it. Michael was obviously the king of trying to prove a point, but, I mean, look, he was shorter than LeBron. He was not as strong as LeBron. I would argue athleticism was about a tie. Jump shot, mm, I mean, from three-point land, you know, statistically, LeBron had a better three-point shot. So, it just it just pisses me off like I, and I'm not trying to hate it's 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 I, I, I it's it's like a you know, you have a child who's a genius and they only get C's and you're just like God, just just do more stop being such a 90 percenter I mean at one point in time he really should have seen him at 39 years old being still the best player in the world when he was in his prime he should have been able to take from all of those and have one of those seasons combined we average like 35 points per game at, at least 12 rebounds and 11 assists. He should have done something historic, and he never did. And all this does when I watch him do well now is kind of frustrate me and remind me of what he could have been, and he never really was, and how he's not an undisputed goat like the true undisputed goats that we have out there, you know, the Bradys, um, you know, the Ali's. Like, it's a, it's a short list. Gretzky, Phelps, Usain Bolt. There's certain sports where it's undisputed. LeBron is far from undisputed, and it just sucks because there's no reason that he shouldn't have been. He was taller, faster than MJ, better shooter, clearly more athletic than almost anybody else on that roster. The most combined. It still gets me, like, fired up. And I know, you know, Corey, he's off. He doesn't want to hear me bitch about LeBron for the 900th time. But it's just, it's just reminders. This is how you remind me. Um, he'll never retire, though, as long as his kid's still in the league is one of the AI bits. I, this is just for fun, and then I'm going to switch into an entirely new sport and subject here. Pop this up for me here. AI, got to love AI out there. This is uh, LeBron James, a.k.a. the Nature Boy. Hit this for me. When's he going to retire? That I will never retire! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I will only retire when I'm dead in this ring! Wow. I'm not done in that Over one. my dead body. I've got too much juice left. Woo! <laughs> I'm still an itch boy. I love this business. I'm going nowhere. 
It's bananas AI is able to do all that. And even more crazy to think that the whole face swap thing, in case, I don't know if anyone doesn't know this, actually started from porn. Apparently, the nerds uh, five, six years ago wanted to put, you know, Scarlett Johansson or Emma Watson into more risque scenes. Next thing you know, they worked on technology that was able to put their face on the porn star's body. And now we have all the face swaps and things that eventually are probably going to lead to like people being accused of crimes they didn't commit and God knows what else. But in the meantime, it's fun. And I thought that was funny having LeBron, you know, never retire being Ric Flair doing the 